All right, so now that I've purchased oliverwiley.com, I need to point it somewhere, because right now it's not doing me a lot of good sitting here on Google Domains. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to my host, I'm going to click on Domains, and then, and this is going to be a little different depending on if you used HostGator, you use one one all the other hosting providers that I mentioned in the previous video, but uh, they all should look similar. Um, you're going to look for something that says set up external domain or a similarly worded item. I'm going to type in oliverwiley.com and right now it's just asking me to associate it with a particular package. Uh, I have two, one on behalf of somebody else, so I'm going to select mine, which I know is that one. And it's going to get a little technical here, um, but I'm going to go with the default um, suggested name servers that one and one uses. There are some reasons for that. Not everybody's going to need that. You can always leave them with Google. In fact, um, if you're using G Suite, you probably should. Uh, but if you're using G Suite for anything, you end up on a job that's using it, whatever, make sure to read the uh, technical documents that come with that. For now, though, I'm just going to click the recommended name servers. And we're going to wait. All right, so we need to copy these over to our Google domain. So I'm going to click DNS, Domain Name Servers. I'm going to use Custom Name Servers. Copy. Paste. Oops. Theoretically, we should be good now. You have to do this copy and paste thing within 30 days, but um, it's easy just to do it right at the time so you don't forget. Otherwise, your domain will shut off. So we're going to click Use Domain. And now it is a part of my cPanel. And I can associate it as though I had purchased it through one and one. Uh, natively. 